The workshop is nearly done. There's only a few things left to do in relation to the building permit, but it's finally at a point where I can start moving tools into the workshop. I'm so excited to be doing this. We're moving in. I'm not just gonna throw tools in and call it a day. I'm gonna make it the most organized workshop it can possibly be. I spent way too much time searching for tools and I'm gonna do my darndest to make sure that it doesn't happen here. I have a bunch of unique ideas on how to efficiently organize in here, some of which we'll have to wait until after the final inspection. But for now, I can start on what I think will be the most important part of organizing this space. And that's what this wall is right here. This is where all the most frequently used tools will go. It's a French cleat system, but I've customized it in a way where everything is grab and go. Whatever I need is within reach at all times. A French cleat is a way to hold something on the wall using two strips of wood. In this case, both strips are cut at a 45 degree angle. One strip is secured to the wall, creating a good lip for the other strip to hook onto. Because of the angles, it does a great job of holding the tool in place. The second strip of wood can be attached to anything you want, so it's really great for customizing your own holders, which is what I did here. This is super easy to make, and I think it looks really clean. So let me show you how I made this French cleat wall. I pulled out a full sheet of 3 quarter inch plywood. I haven't made a workbench yet, so I'm working on the ground. I propped the sheet up on some 2x4s and started measuring. <laughs> Doofy's got to double check my work. I'm first cutting this into 4 inch strips. I measured 3 inches from the side, marked the ends and the middle, and brought out a straight edge guide. I lined up the guide with the lines and clamped it down. My circular saw cuts one inch from the side, so that's why I marked it at three inches. I repeated this process several times, making sure that the cut piece was supported so the end of the cut didn't get messed up. Next step was to cut these strips in half with a 45 degree angle. I made a diagonal line at the center of the board, then lined up my table saw as best I could. Next, I cut just a tiny bit into the first piece and measured to see if both sides were equal. After making the slight adjustment that was needed, I started ripping all the strips in half. I ended up with 16 8 foot long strips. These are the ones attaching directly to the wall. Now I had to decide where to put the French cleats. I had a general idea, but now is the time to get specific. I know where the studs are based on the screws in the plywood walls. I'm aiming for the ends of these strips to be pretty close or right on a stud. I can attach these just to the plywood walls, but since they'll be holding a bit of weight, it's best to drive the screw all the way to the stud. Once I figured out the left and right location, I drove one screw into the center of the strip directly into a stud. My plywood sheets are level, so I already had a good idea of level, but I used an actual level to make sure the strip was level. Level, level, level. I attached a handful of screws to finish connecting the strip. I used spacers, which were cutoffs of a test cleat I had made, to hold up the next row to be attached. One end bowed out from the wall, so I had to make a temporary shelf out of one of the spacers. This strip should be able to hold quite a bit of weight, since it's attached to the studs. This is the best way I know to test its holding capabilities. No tool is going to weigh as much as me, so yeah, this is going to work just fine. Okay, onward. I placed a strip every four inches. After installing a few, I got the hang of it and they just started flying up on the wall. These continued to pass the whole test. <laughs> Almost like a rock climbing wall, just with splinters. I obviously can't place strips over the outlet, so I cut them up to have a clearance. It was a lot easier working upwards, so I marked and installed the lowest strip. It was a bit tricky getting it in the right spot, but I got it figured out, and then continued to work upwards. Okay, the wall portion is done, so now I can move on to the holders. I already had a box meant to hold caulk and sealers, so I popped a cleat on the back of it and threw it up on the wall. Oh, I should mention that I also used 3 quarter inch pieces for all the cleats on the holders. 
What I really like is that I can move a holder anywhere I want with ease. It can slide down a row or move up and down without much effort. Looks like this system is gonna work. So now I could start to get creative. I'm gonna make my own holders for tools. I have a bunch of leftover pieces of half inch plywood from the walls, as well as some three quarter inch wood from the two player pinball machine. So I'm first gonna utilize that wood. I started lining up tools and making plans for everything I have. In most of the holders, I left a bit of extra space for new or additional tools. So I don't have to remake an entire holder when I acquire something new. I don't think anything I made is revolutionary. It's mostly all just boxes that are nailed and glued together with a cleat on the back. There's a few little tricks I did, making it custom to what will help me be as efficient as possible. After this first one for the drills, I realized that I needed to have the back piece be a bit longer to overlap the next row below. So I replaced the quarter inch sheet on the back with a half inch piece that hung down a bit more. This made it much more stable. I continued on, making holders for everything I need or use on a regular basis or that I would like to be within reach and not tucked away. Again, this is supposed to be a grab and go wall. So the tool should pretty much be ready to use or quickly set up for use. If the holder was for one tool, I tried to make its footprint as small as I could. If it was for a handful of different items, I made sure everything was easily accessible and fit well together. There's a few small details that I added to some of the holders to really make it as functional as possible. For the pencil, pen, and marker holder, I added a pencil sharpener, so I'd always have a way to sharpen a pencil before dropping it back in the bucket. I won't ever put a dull pencil back, so whenever I grab a pencil, it'll be ready to go. I made a double decker tape holder. The top holds the bigger rolls like duct tape and painter's tape. The bottom holds the smaller rolls like different colored masking tapes and electrical tape and such. I also added a holder on the side for a packing tape dispenser. And on the front, I added a serrated blade to assist in cutting any of these rolls that don't just rip. There's a few different ways I could have made a screwdriver holder to hold a bunch of them, but I always end up using the same three or four flathead and Phillip drivers over and over again. So I opted for a horizontal magnet holder where I can see the size of the driver instead of it blindly hanging down. I had to think back to past projects to see what hand tools and materials I use most often. One of the holders I made that I think will be used quite frequently is this box to hold small, medium, and large hand tools. It just has a bunch of dividers in it to hold tools of different sizes. It's kind of a catch-all for a multitude of different stuff. All things that I may need to easily grab, such as pliers, vice grips, scissors, cutters, wrenches, etc, etc. And because things don't have a specific home, it's easily interchangeable based on what I find gets more use and what doesn't get used at all. Once I finished the tool holder, I put it up on the wall. One by one, the wall started filling up. And before I knew it, pretty much everything I would want on that wall had a home. The beauty of this French Cleese system is that the holders can easily be moved from one spot to another. So if I'm using a tool more often for a project, I can move it down to be a quicker reach. I'm also gonna add French cleats to other spots in the workshop. So it's all a cohesive system. This is just so cool to see. I'm gonna have the most efficient space possible. And this is just the beginning of how I'm organizing this space. There's so many things I'm planning on doing to organize the small parts, model making pieces, paint, and more. It's gonna be good. Okay, that's it for now. See ya. Slice my thumb in the corner right here. These things are so sharp. Ooh, I'm good. Doopy. Doopy, doopy, doopy. What are we barking at? <laughs>